Welcome, welcome, welcome to this channel, Baruch Haba B'Shem Yahuwah. And today, I'm going to do part 7 in the series of the spiritual man. And it is called the stake and the Ruach HaKadash or Holy Spirit. Many, if not most, believers were not filled with the Ruach HaKadash or Holy Spirit at the moment they believed the Master Yahusha. What is even worse, after many years of believing, they continue to be entangled by sin and remain carnal. Believers, in these pages which follow, what we intend to explain regarding, regarding how a believer may be set free from his flesh is based upon the experience of the believers at Corinth, as well as that of many like believers everywhere. We moreover do not wish to imply that a believer must first believe before um, in uh, subst substitutionary work of the stake before he can believe in its identifying work. It is not true. However, that many do not have a distinct revelation concerning the stake at the beginning. What they have received is but half the whole truth is but half of the whole truth. Yeah, because they are not correctly being taught. And so they are compelled to receive the other half at a subsequent period. Now, if the reader already has accepted the complete work that has been done at the stake, what is given here will concern him little. But if, like the majority of believers, he too has believed only half a part of the whole truth, then the reminder is indispensable for him too. Yet we do want our readers to know that the two sides of the work at the stake need not be accepted separately. A second believing only becomes necessary because of incompleteness at the first. So, we go further here. The deliverance at the stake. Upon reciting many deeds of the flesh in his Galatian letter, the disciple Paul then points out that those who belong to Mashiach Yahusha have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 Here is deliverance. It is not strange that what concerns the believer falsely differs from what concerns the Most High Yah. The former is concerned with the works of the flesh. Galatians 5 verse 19 That is, with the varying sins of the flesh. <clears throat> he is occupied with today's anger, tomorrow's jealousy, or the day after tomorrow's strife. The believer mourns over a particular sin and longs for victory over it. That is um, something many believers are in. And I see them. And I also must say that I sometimes 
uh, catch myself also in such moments. I see them close by, I see them on a distance. And we all are still s stuck in that stage. <laughs> Yet all these sins are but fruits from the same tree. While plucking one fruit, actually one cannot pick off any, outcrops, outcrops another. So, one after another, they grow, giving him no chance for victory. On the other hand, the Most High Yahuwah is concerned not with the works of the flesh, but with the flesh itself. Galatians again 5 verse 24 Had the tree been put to death, our body also resembles the tree. <clears throat> that, that is why cutting of trees is symbolizing the cutting of man. Trees that fall down during heavy storms is a fall down symbol of humankind. But because the majority of people nowadays do not see all these signs, nor understand their meanings, they think that, oh, another tree has fallen down due to heavy storm. No, if you are seeing a fallen tree on your path while you are walking the dog, it means that, that the fallen tree you see tells you a sign that you are about to fall. It's the same with having a, a flooding in your, in, in your bathroom or in your kitchen because the plumbing is not good anymore. That means you are getting drowned. In what are you getting drowned? In the worldliness. The worldliness that is drowning you more and more into its swamp. This is the same going to an appointment and all of a sudden your car doesn't start. It doesn't want to start in any way, shape or form. What does it say? It says that Yahuwah the Most High doesn't want you to go to that appointment but wants you to stay where you are and to be with Him. And to do some prayer or some praising work or reading his word or find something that that you know uh, he guides you maybe to a video on youtube that you have to listen so usurp the information or his words his living words everything is not done on a purpose it's of a it's not done at random i think i mean but it's all done with a purpose. So if you, on a sudden time, are walking with your dog, and all of a sudden a branch falls off the tree, comes near upon you, what does this branch do? It is a sign of the Most High Yahuwah to wake you up. It's literally saying this, wake up. Get out of your sleep. See through the lies. Wake up your eyes. Go open up your eyes. Go seek me. This is a warning. The next time a heavier branch will fall on you. So you lay in the hospital. And if you still do not listen, the next time the whole tree is coming upon you. That's what it is. The same with the tree that falls on the house. If you see that happening, or you are part of it, at that moment you are in the whole scene, it means something for you that says 
that the Most High Yahuwah is speaking to you and says, your own house is falling apart. Why? Because it's not built on a decent rock. It's built on sand. What does that mean? He is saying, come out of her. Come out of the world, my people. Come out of her. That's what the sign is. He is warning you and saying, okay, now it is the concrete house, the house made of bricks and concrete that is now going down. But it actually is telling you that your own house is going down. He takes something in the, in the surroundings as a warning and the next time it's you yourself. That's how it works. So, okay, I had to say this. So, thank you so much, Ruach HaKadosh, for giving this information. And thank you for letting me speak this towards those who have the ears to hear. Yet all these sins are but... Uh, fruits from the same tree while plucking one fruit <clears throat> you know the other one uh, crops out the other fruit so um, <clears throat> one after another they grow giving him no chance for victory on the other hand Yahuwah the Most High is concerned not with the works of the flesh but with the flesh itself had the tree been put to death, would there be any need to fear, lest it bear fruit? The believer busily makes plans to handle sins, which are the fruits, while forgetting to deal with the flesh itself, which is the root. No wonder that before he can clear up one sin, another has burst forth. We must therefore deal today with the source of sin. Babes in Mashiach Yahusha need to appropriate the deeper meaning of the stake, for they are still carnal. The aim of the Most High Yah is to crucify the believer's old man with Mashiach Yahusha with the result that they who belong to Mashiach Yahusha have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Bear in mind that it is the flesh together with its powerful passions and desires that has been crucified. As the sinner was regenerated and redeemed from his sins through the cross or stake, better said, it was a stake. So, now the carnal babe in Mashiach Yahusha must be delivered from the rule of the flesh by the same the stake by the same stake so the power of the stake needs to be active in you so that he can walk according to the Ruach HaKadash and no longer according to the flesh Therefore, it will not be long before he becomes a spiritual believer. Here we find the contrast between the fall of man and the operation of the stake. The salvation provided by the latter is just the remedy for the former. How fitting indeed they are to each other, provided um, yeah, to each other, okay. Firstly, Mashiach Yahusha died at the stake for the sinner to remit his sin. A holy uh, Yahuwah, the Most High, could now righteously 
forgive him. But secondly, the sinner as well died at the stake with Mashiach Yahusha, so that he might not be controlled any longer by his flesh. Only this can enable man's spirit to regain its proper rule, make the body its outward servant and the soul its intermediary. Wow! This goes back again to the beginning of this teaching series in which it's being said the function of the soul. The soul is the intermediary or what I call the intercessor, the bridge between the spirit and the body. The spirit who get, gets the orders from the Ruach HaKadosh, the Ruach of the Most High Yahuwah, then our spirit passes that on to our soul. Our soul needs to pass that order exactly as it has been given. Has it, uh, uh, needs to, to pass that order onto the body. And the body is the one that carries out the order and has the order manifested in the matter, the physical form. That's how it works. But the free are uh, not that in line anymore because the soul is now completely under obedience of the body and the will of the body. So that needs to be undone. And that is why the Ruach HaKadosh is doing this uh, disciplining work in you. That is the main reason why the Most High Yahuwah is already your whole life being busy to do its work in you. Not only on the moment that you have been immersed, as what many people think, I was corrected in that by the Ruach HaKadosh himself by saying, no, 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 this process starts at the moment you get born. But because we do not understand the signs anymore, we do not see the leading hand of our beloved Most High Yahuwah in our life from the moment we got born till the moment we get immersed. <clears throat> and even after the immersion, many still do not see the leading hand of the Most High Yah in their life. All right. <clears throat> uh, so, with Mashiach Yahusha, uh, he might not be controlled any longer by his flesh, and he, I mean the believer. Only this can enable man's spirit to regain its proper rule and make the body its outward servant and the soul its intermediary. In this way, the spirit, the soul and the body are restored to their original position before the fall. If we are ignorant of the meaning of the death herein, described, we shall not be delivered. May the Ruach HaKadosh be our revealer. Those who belong to Mashiach Yahusha reverse to every believer in the Most High, Yahuwah, but also in Mashiach Yahusha. All who have believed Him and are born anew belong to Him. The deciding factor is whether one has been related to Mashiach Yahusha in life, not how spiritual one is or what work he does for, for the master, nor whether he has been freed from sin. 
has overcome the passions and desires of his flesh and is now wholly sanctified. In other words, the question can only be, has one been regenerated or not? Has one believed in Mashiach Yahusha as his Savior or not? If he has, no matter what his current spiritual state may be, in victory or in defeat, he has crucified the flesh. <clears throat> The issue before us is not a moral one, nor is it a matter of spiritual life, knowledge or work. It simply is whether he is the master. If so, then he already has crucified the flesh at the stake. The meaning clearly is not that of going to crucify or of in the process of crucifying, but has crucified. It may be helpful to be more explicit here. We have indicated that the crucifixion of the flesh is not dependent upon experiences, however different they may be. Rather is it contingent upon the fact of Yahuwah's finished work. Those who belong to Mashiach Yahusha, the weak as well as the strong, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So, this means if you are being so-called baptized and the, the same day you are eating unclean food, how can you do so? That means something. You need to ponder upon why is it that you are still eating unclean food and not only that day but the next day, the day after that one and so on for years. Also because probably you are not immersed in the correct way, not in the name of Yahuwah Yahusha Mashiach Alahim. And so you didn't got the Ruach HaKadosh, because if that was the case, then you would be corrected at the same moment. And if not at the same moment, at, at least at several day, uh, the day after, or maybe the day after that day, but you would get your correction. Because the Ruach HaKadosh is also the Ruach of correction. And if you were immersed correctly, then can you please tell the Father why, why you are still joining the steeple and do Sunday service, which is actually not the day that Yahuwah has said to be in Shabbat. You say you still sin, but the Most High Yahuwah says you have been crucified at the stake. And this is a thing that many believers are still saying to themselves. So stop saying that because actually you have been freed from sin. And if you have the idea that you have sinned, you do repentance. You say your temper persists, but Yahuwah's answer is that you have been crucified. You say your lusts remain very potent, but Yahuwah replies that your flesh has been crucified at the stake. For the moment, will you please not look at your experience? But just hearken to what Yahuwah says to you. If you do not listen to His word and instead look daily upon your situation, situation, 
you will never enter into the reality of your flesh having been crucified at the stake. Disregard your feelings and experience. The Most High Yahuwah pronounces your flesh crucified. It therefore has been crucified. Simply respond to Yahuwah's word and you shall have experience. When the Most High Yahuwah tells you that your flesh has been crucified, you should answer with Amma. Indeed, my flesh has been crucified. In thus acting upon his word, you shall see your flesh is dead indeed. <clears throat> the believers at Corinth had indulged in sins of fornication, jealousies, contentions, party spirit, lawsuits, and many others. They were plainly carnal. True, they were babes in Mashiach Yahusha. Nevertheless, they were of Mashiach Yahusha. Can it actually be said that these carnal believers had their flesh crucified at the stake? The answer undeniably is yes. Even these had had their flesh crucified. How is this so? We should realize that the book of Scripture never tells us to have ourselves crucified. It informs us only that we were crucified. We should understand that we are not to be crucified individually, but that we have been crucified together with Mashiach Yahusha. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Romans chapter 6 verse 6. Go read these scriptures too. If it is a crucifixion together, then the occasion when the Master Yahusha was himself crucified is that moment when our flesh too was crucified. And actually, you can also say that comes now in, in, in my Ruach, we were actually in his loins when Yahusha hung at the stake, we were in his loins. I get this all of a sudden in the Ruach. So, um, thank you so much, Abba Father Yahuwah, for giving me this information. Because actually at the moment that he was hanging at the stake, we were in his loins. So we were hanging there also. Wow. I think not many people think about that. Furthermore, the co-crucifixion is not inflicted on us personally since it was Mashiach Yahusha who took us to the stake at his crucifixion. Wherefore, the Most High Yahuwah considers our flesh as crucified already. To him, it is an accomplished fact. Whatever may be our personal experience, the Most High Yahuwah declares that those who belong to Mashiach Yahusha have crucified the flesh. In order to possess such death, we must not give to too large a place to discovering how or to noticing our experience. We should instead believe Yahuwah's word. 
Yahuwah says, My flesh has been crucified, so I believe it is crucified. I acknowledge that what Yahuwah says is true. By responding in this fashion, we shall soon encounter the reality of it. If we look at Yahuwah's fact first, our experience will follow next. From Yahuwah's perspectives, these Corinthians did have their flesh crucified at the stake with Mashiach Yahusha. But from their point of view, they certainly did not have such an experience personally. Perhaps this was due to their knowing um, Yahuwah's effect. Hence, the first step towards deliverance is to treat the flesh according to Yahuwah's viewpoint. And what is that? It is not trying to crucify the flesh, but in acknowledging that it has been crucified already. Not in walking according to our sight, but, in, in a, uh, but according to our faith in the word of Yahuwah. If we are well established on this point of acknowledging the flesh as already crucified, then we shall be able to proceed in dealing with the flesh per in dealing with the flesh experimentally. If we waver over this fact, the possibility of our definitely possessing it will escape us in order to experience co-crucifixion, we first must set aside our current situation and simply trust the word of our beloved Most High Yah. While we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions were at work in our members to bear fruit for death but now we are dead romans 7 verse 5 and 6 because of this the flesh has no rule over us any further so the ruach hakadash and experience we have believed and acknowledged that our flesh has been crucified at the stake now not before we can turn our attention to the matter of experience. Though we presently stress experience, we nevertheless firmly hold to the fact of our crucifixion with Mashiach Yahusha. What the Most High Yahuwah has done for us and what we experience of Yahuwah's completed work, though distinguishable, are inseparable. The Most High Yahuwah has done what He could do. The question next is, what attitude do we assume towards his finished work? Not just in name, but in actuality. Has he crucified our flesh at the stake? If we believe and if we, <coughs> and if we exercise our will to choose what the Most High Yahuwah has accomplished for us, it will become our life experience. We are not asked to do anything because Yahuwah has done it all. We are not required to crucify our flesh for Yahuwah has crucified it at the stake. Do you believe this is true? Do you desire to possess it in your life? If we believe and if we desire, then we shall cooperate with the Ruach HaKadosh in obtaining rich experience. Colossians 3 verse 5 implores us to put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. 
This is the path towards experience. The therefore indicates the consequences of what precedes it in verse 3. Namely, you have died. The you have died is what Yahuwah has achieved for us all because you have died. Therefore, put to death what is earthly in you. The first mention of death here is our factual position in Mashiach Yahusha. The second, our, the second, our actual experience. The failure of believers today can be traced to a failure to see the relationship between these two deaths. Some have attempted to put their flesh to naught for they lay stress only upon the death experience. But the actual experience we also need to leave behind. Their flesh consequently grows livelier with each dealing. Others have acknowledged the truth that their flesh in fact was crucified with Mashiach Yahusha at the stake. Yet they do not seek the practical reality of it. Neither of these can ever appropriate experimentally the crucifixion of the flesh. If we desire to put our members to death, we first must have a ground for such action. Otherwise, we merely rely upon our strength. No degree or no degree of seal can ever bring the desired experience to us. Moreover, if we only know our flesh has been crucified with Mashiach Yahusha but are not exercised to have his uh, accomplished work carried out in us, our knowledge too will be unavailing. A putting to naught requires a knowing first of an identification in his death. Knowing our identification, we must exercise the putting to death. These two must go together. We are deceiving ourselves. Should we be satisfied with perceiving the fact that of identification thinking we are now spiritual because the flesh has been destroyed on the other hand it is an equal deception if in putting to naught the wicked deeds of the flesh we overemphasize them and fail to take a death attitude towards the flesh should we forget that the flesh is dead, we shall never be able to lay anything to rest. Wow. The put to death is contingent upon the you have died. This putting to death means bringing the death of the Mashiach Yahusha to bear upon all the deeds of of the flesh so what a teaching so far the crucifixion of the most of the crucifixion of Mashiach Yahusha is a most authoritative one for it puts away everything it encounters wow since we are united with him in his crucifixion, we can apply his death to any member which is tempted to lust and immediately put it to naught. Our union with Mashiach Yahusha in his death signifies that it is an accomplished fact in our spirits. What a believer must do now is to bring this 
sure death out of his spirit and apply it to his members each uh, time. His wicked lusts may be aroused. Such spiritual death is not a once-for-all proposition whenever the believer is not watchful or loses his faith. The flesh will certainly go on a rampage if he desires to be conformed completely to the death of Mashiach Yahusha, he must unceasingly put to naught the deeds of his members. Members are the organs in the body, they are called members. So that what is real in the spirit may be executed in the body. Henceforth, the believer should walk by the Spirit and should not gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 We always should remember that however deeply our uh, Yahusha stake may penetrate into our lives, we cannot expect to avoid further agitations of the wicked deeds of our members without constant vigilance. Whenever one of Yahuwah's own fails to follow the Ruach HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit, he immediately reverts to following the flesh. Yahuwah unveils to us the reality of our flesh through his disciple Paul's delineation of the believer's self in Romans 7 from verse 5 onward. The moment the believer ceases to heed the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit, he instantly fits into the carnal life pattern described here. Some assume that because Romans 7 stands between chapter 6 and 8, the activity of the flesh will become past history as soon as the believer has passed through it and enter it into and entered into the life of the Ruach HaKadosh, uh, what is being told in Romans 8. So, in actuality, the chapters 7 and 8 run concurrently. Whenever a believer does not walk by the Spirit, as in Romans 8, he is immediately engulfed in the experience of Romans 7. So then I myself serve the law of the Most High Yah with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. You will notice that Paul concludes his description of his experience given before verse 25 by using the phrase, So then he encounters incessant defeat, up through verse 24, only in verse 25, does he enter into victory. Thanks be unto the Most High Yah through Mashiach Yahusha, our Master. Verse 25. Upon gaining victory over constant defeat, we read Paul saying, I of myself serve the law of the Most High Yah with my mind. Here he is telling us that his new life desires what Yahuwah desires. That, however, is not the whole story, for Paul immediately continues by declaring, But with my flesh I serve the law of sin. As this we find him saying just after his victory of verse 25, the obvious in verence is that no matter how much his inner mind may serve Yahuwah's law, his flesh 
always serves sin's law. However, much he may be delivered from the flesh, it remains unchanged and continues to serve sin's law. Because the flesh is forever the flesh, our life is the Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKadosh and may be uh, the, uh, the pen and may be deepened, but this will not alter the nature of the flesh or prevent it from serving the law of sin. If we therefore desire to be led by and through the Ruach HaKadosh, or also known as the Holy Spirit, and freed from the oppression of the flesh. We must put to death the wicked deeds of the body and walk according to the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit. And that means walking in the Spirit. Leave your flesh behind. Actually, your flesh, you need to see it as not relevant anymore. All right. What's a long message? The existence of the flesh uh, let us note carefully that though the flesh may be so put to death that it becomes ineffective the real meaning of destroy in Romans 6 6 it endures nonetheless it is a great error to consider the flesh eradicated from us and to conclude that the nature of sin is completely annihilated such false teaching leads people astray so it has no say anymore your flesh his mouth is shut its will is over it has no say in your life any longer you only give some food so it can do what it needs to do because unfortunately we need this flesh body otherwise we can do the, uh, uh, the, the, the fulfillment of the orders of the Most High Yah but thankfully one day one day we go through a certain process and then we finally get rid of the whole flesh body and it doesn't be there anymore and it would be nice if that day comes soon uh, regenerated life does not alter the flesh co-crucifixion does not extinguish the flesh the indwelling holy spirit or ruach hakadosh does not render it impossible to walk by the flesh the flesh with its fleshly nature abides perpetually in the believer whenever opportunity is provided for its operation that is why you need to be constant aware when is it your flesh that speaks to you and when is yahuwah that speaks to you it once will spring into action yet yeah. so if the flesh smells a chance because you have become in a certain way weak then it will take it it's like a pit bull give it just a bit of your finger nail and it takes everything so um, the, the greatest lesson of this whole lesson is actually that you need to be aware constantly if you are doing things and somewhere you feel that it's not correct then you need to ask yourself actually beforehand already if the idea or action that is that you are about to do um, or about to fulfill if it truly is something coming from Yahuwah the Most High or if it is something that is from the flesh
We have previously seen how closely associated are the human body and the flesh until such time as we are freed physically from this body we shall not be able to be so delivered from the flesh that no more possibility of its activity exists whatever is born of the flesh is flesh this is absolutely no eradication of it until this body corrupted from Adam is transformed our body is not yet redeemed all right no. so we need to be alert on daily basis lest the flesh break forth with its wicked deeds and this also goes hand in hand with your thought life because it, the wickedness starts in your thought life so every thought that is not pure that is not clean in which you can feel that's not of Yahuwah take it out because rebuke it uh, whatever you do but take it out before it uh, before the flesh gets its chance to open a door our life on earth can at best be likened to that of Paul who remarked that though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh since he still possesses a body he walks in the flesh yet because the nature of the flesh is so corrupt he does not war according to the flesh he walks in the flesh yes but he does not walk by the flesh until a believer is set free from the physical body he is not entirely free from the flesh physically speaking he must live in the flesh unfortunately this takes some while and actually it would be nice if we could be undone today from our flesh instead of tomorrow that would be very nice um, spiritually speaking he need not and must not war according to the flesh now if by obvious inference from 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 Paul being in the body remains susceptible to warring according to the flesh who then dares to say that he no longer has any potentiality active flesh The finished work at the stake and its continual application by the Ruach HaKadosh are consequently inseparable. Naturally, a believer should understand that in Mashiach Yahusha he is a new creation. As such, the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit indwells his spirit and this together with the death of Mashiach Yahusha actively working in his body can equip the believer to live a holy life such a walk is only possible because the Ruach HaKadosh administers the stake upon the believers flesh in putting to death the deeds of its members it is uh, then no longer active this is not to imply however that he has no more flesh for a believer continues to possess a sinful flesh and is conscious of its presence and defilement 
the very fact that sinful nature is transmitted to the children has established beyond doubt that what we know or that what we now possess is not the natural perfection of sinless Adam. No. Unfortunately. Uh, a believer must confess that even in his holiest hours there may be moments of weakness, evil thoughts may creep into his mind unconsciously. So that's why I say you need to take care of your mind because there it is all starting. Unbecoming words may escape his mouth unknowingly. Israel may find it sometimes difficult to yield to the master Yahusha, and he secretly may even endorse the thought of self-sufficiency. These are none but the works of the flesh. Self-sufficiency is the work of the flesh. Hmm. The Temple of the Ruach HaKadosh and its liberty to do Yahuwah's work. Now the way to preserve one's freedom from the flesh must be exactly the way this freedom is first obtained. At, the, at that junk, juncture of life and death. When the believer says yes to the Most High Yahuwah and no to the flesh. Far from it being an, uh, an uh, aristic once for all event in time. The believer must maintain throughout his life an affirmative attitude towards the Most High Yah and a negative response towards the flesh. And here comes fasting in play because fasting also makes you far more aware of your thought life. No believer today can arrive at the point of being beyond temptation, how necessary to watch and pray and even to fast that one may know how to walk according to the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit. Um, nevertheless, the be believer ought to delude neither Yahuwah's purpose nor his own hope. He has the possibility of sinning, but he must not sin. And the Mashiach Yahusha has died for us and crucified our flesh with himself at the stake. The Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit indwells us to make real to us what Mashiach Yahusha has accomplished. We have the absolute possibility of not being governed by the flesh anymore. So the stake has crucified the flesh, holy, if we are minded to put to naught the evil works of the body in the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, we shall experience indeed the finished work at the cross. So then brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh. We are debtors not to, yeah, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Ruach HaKadosh you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Romans 8, verse 12 and 13. Since 
the Most High Yahuwah has bestowed such grace and salvation. The fault is altogether ours if we continue to follow the flesh. We are no longer debtors to it as we once were before we knew such salvation. If we now persist in living by the flesh, it is because we want so to live, not because we must so live. If by the Ruach HaKadash you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The entire relationship expressed in the verse hangs upon that word if. Yahuwah has done all that is necessary. He cannot do anything more. It is now up to us to take a stand. If we neglect this perfect salvation, how then shall we escape? If you live according to the flesh, you will die. This is a warning. Although you are regenerated, you nonetheless will lose out in your spiritual walk as though you are not alive. If by the Spirit you live, you also die, but you die in the death of Mashiach Yahusha. Such a death is most authentic because um, the death will put to naught all the deeds of the flesh. One way or another you will die. Which death do you choose? that which stems from lively flesh or that which issues in active spirit. If the flesh is alive, the Ruach HaKadash or Holy Spirit cannot live actively. Which life do you prefer, that of the flesh or that of the Ruach HaKadash? Yahuwah's provision for you is that your flesh and its entire power and activities may be put under the power of Mashiach Yahusha's death at the stake. What is lacking in us is none other than death. Let us emphasize it before we speak of life, for there can be no resurrection without prior death. Are we willing to obey the Most High Yahuwah's will? Are we amenable to letting the stake of Mashiach Yahusha come out practically in our lives? If so, we must, by the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit, be uh, put to death all the wicked deeds of the body. So, we must, by the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit, put to death all the wicked deeds of the body. All right. It was an enormous lesson in this, teaching in this, and a lot of information. Thank you so much for listening. And with this, I have come to the end of part seven in this series, The Spiritual Man. And um, I wish you all a Baruch day. Do not forget to praise Yahuwah, the Most High, in everything you do. Baruch Abba Shem Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Baruch Yahuwah, Baruch Yahuwah, Baruch Yahuwah.
see you next time